So Saraji has been explaining about dana. So it is now quite sufficient. If Saraji has to go on to give talk about dana, there are a lot of things left to be explained. Buddha taught, uh, which is in Iti Mutaka, that if the beings understand the benefits and results of dana in the way, in the manner that Buddha understood, then they will not consume without sharing their belongings with others. Which means that if beings understood the result of dana, they will donate a little, whether a little or many. They will not consume anything without donating to others. So Buddha said in Iti Wutaka that if beings understood these benefits and results, they would even share the less morsel of food if there are anyone who are to receive this last morsel of food. So this is what Buddha said in Iti Buddha. So what are the benefits of dana is that one is one will be able to overcome and dispel gradually the uh, mystery the mystery that one cannot bear the uh, sharing of one belongings with others. So by doing dhyana, one will be able to overcome the jealousy that one can have to share with others. So by sharing one's belonging with others, by offering others, one's, uh, by offering others, then there will be mudita, sympathetic joy, when one sees others getting what they need. So in this way, one will be overcoming materia. So this is how Buddha phrased the benefit of dana. So the main thing is, when a donor donates, whether a little or many, Whichever way it is, the dana should be pure and clean. And one should perform dana with good aim and objective. One should have the knowledge that doing good deeds will bring good results, doing bad deeds will bring bad results. In this way, one should do dana which is pure and clean. And one should understand that worldly pleasure is fatal and dangerous. The kind of pleasure that has nothing to do with the suffering of life has a guarantee. So in this way, one should perform dana with good aim and objective. Having aim and objective to be free from suffering. So if one has this aim and objective of being free or to be free from the suffering, then this dana is how Buddha would like it to be. And this kind of dana will give uh, complete uh, benefit. 
So this kind of dana should be done. So this kind of dana will bring Boga Sampati accomplishment of material things, accomplishment of things. So by having this Boga Sampati, having accomplishment of material things, one will not be inferior in life. So that's why it is said that the person who does dana will prosper and will not be inferior. So Buddha gave teaching to those who are not familiar with the dana to familiarize then with high class Dhamma, Buddha taught Anubhobi Gata. Anubhobi Gata means the kind of talk that comes in a series. First, Buddha would give Dana Gata. Buddha gave talk concerning with Dana. And then Buddha went on to give talk on Sila Gata, talk concerning with moral conduct and benefits of morality. Then Buddha went on to talk on Saga Gata, teaching that these wholesome deeds will lead them to be born where there is abundance uh, desirable objects. But Buddha also taught that these worldly pleasures are not the genuine kind of happiness. If one is wasting time with the worldly pleasure, then these worldly pleasures are fatal, dangerous, and when one will encounter suffering. So Buddha showed the fault of sensual pleasure and Buddha said to overcome, to dispel the internal enemy such as Raga, Dosa, Moha and to feel disenchantment with these uh, defilements. And also the way to be liberated, Buddha taught about Nikkama, the way to be uh, liberated, the way to renunciation. So Saraji would also like to give talk in a series of talks that Buddha had done. So this Dhamma Kata, the talk about Dhamma, comes first. So there are three uh, causes, three reasons for Buddha to give talk about dana first because many of the people can do dana easily. So it is one of the reasons. And many of the people can easily perform dana that's why Buddha taught uh, about dana first. So people who are generous will easily give away. And then the dana, which has a good aim, proper uh, dana done with proper aim, will lead them to practice sila, morality also. So by doing dana, this dana will lead the person to have firm precepts. So in other words, dana can open the path to morality. That's why Buddha uh, taught about dana first of all.
the person who has generosity, whether it is a man or a woman, the person who is generous will not have attachment on his or her belongings. So he, she will not be stingy to share his or her belonging with others. So he, she, such person can easily observe morality precepts. So being free from attachment on the belonging, on his or her belonging, he, she does not have any selfishness and there will not be greed, so he, she can easily observe sila, morality. So this is according to the text. So Saraji is giving talk, not without any reference, but according to the text. Having no selfishness, he, she can share his or her belonging with others. There will not be any stinginess, so he, she is willing to share with others. Having this willingness to share with others, it, it means that he, she has made up loving kindness towards others, wanting the welfare of others, see, uh, being happy to see others make use of his or her offering. In this way, the donor overcomes stinginess and he, she can observe firmly on sila morality. The other day, Saraji explained on Chalanga Dana, Dana having six factors of Dana. So this Dana having the six factors, the donor as well as the receive the one who receives the donation, both of them both sides are pure in sila. So in this way, the donor is supporting the receiver and also the receiver is helping the donor. So in this way, both the donor and the receiver are helping, supporting each other. So, both the donor and receiver, they are pure in precept, and so it will be in a way that one is helping others. And there will be mutual metta, mutual loving kindness between them. So, the donor and the receiver will have knit down towards each other, so there will be patience, forgiveness, sacrifice. So having knit down patience, forgiveness and sacrifice, one will refrain from cruelty and transgression. So there will not be tormenting others. So Buddha taught on things that should be performed, that is, Buddha taught first on dana, and then Buddha went on to talk on things that should be refrained. That's why Buddha went on to talk on sila, morality, after giving talks on the dana.
So there are two kinds of dana. The first one is jedana dana, volition, and the second one is vatu dana, the object that is to be offered or the donation object. So jedana dana, the first one jedana dana, is also called prajaga jedana the volition that causes someone to offer his or her belonging. So having volition, wanting others to have uh, things that they need, food and belongings that they need. So having volition alone one cannot perform dana. So if there is things to be offered, but if there is no volition, jidana, there will not be uh, dana. So if there is attachment on the belonging also, there will not be dana. And if one is hateful, on the receiver of the dana, then one will not make, uh, one will not do dana. And if one does not understand the benefit of dana, he, she will not perform dana. So there should not be any selfishness or greed. If there is selfishness or greed, dana cannot arise. So, to be able to perform dana, there should be both jedana, volition, and the vatu dana, the object to be offered. So, only if these two are present, will there be the actual offering of dana. And in order to offer dana, one needs mitta, wanting the welfare of others. So there are two types. The first one is donating, wishing for the welfare of others. And second one is donating in a way of paying uh, respect and reverence. The first one, donating, for the welfare of others. So this kind of uh, dana can also be done to animals and pets. With compassion, one can offer food to the animal or pets. But the second type, offering with uh, respect and reverence, one needs to choose the, uh, the virtue, but one needs to choose who to whom uh, to be offered. So before doing this dana, one should choose a person who is high, uh, high in Silas Madi Banya. One should choose a person who has uh, practiced the three trainings Sila, Madi, and Banya, morality, concentration, and wisdom. So the other day, Syaraji explained that in order to be Chalanga Dana, in order to fulfill the six factors of Dana, the person who receives the Dana should be free from Raga, Dosa, Moha. So the receiver should be free from lust, hatred, and delusion. Even if the receiver is not totally free from raga, dosa, moha, he, she should be practicing the trainings, practicing the three trainings, silas, Padi, danya, in order to overcome, in order to dispel the raga, Dosa Moha.
So the commentator gave this comment about dana as dana tadanto silan samadana sakoti. It means that the person who is able to perform such kind of dana with good aim and objective can easily observe sila morality. So doing dana is wanting the welfare of the person who receives the dana and also uh, in a way uh, giving dana in a way of respect and paying homage. So based on these two factors, wanting the welfare of the person who receives and the second one is donating so as to pay homage or respect. Based on these two factors, one let go his or her belonging, one offer his or her belonging. It is called Parijaga. So the donor has Mitta, loving kindness, wanting the welfare of others. So the donor who has this kind of Mitta, loving kindness, wanting the welfare of others, will not hurt, torment, or torture others. So the donor who donates with loving kindness will no way hurt others. So in this way, the donor who is able to perform dana systematically can easily observe, mor uh, observe sila, morality. Because when offering dana, he, she is doing with mitta, wanting the welfare of others, and also offering dana in a way of paying respect or paying homage. So this donor will not be tormenting, torturing or hurting others. So the donor can easily refrain from things that should be refrained. So he, she can easily uh, practice morality. So it is more difficult to dispel the attachment dirt than to give things to others. So by offering things, by letting go of one possession, parijaka, there will be Boga Santati, one will be fulfilled with possession and material wealth. So by doing dana, by offering things with good objective, with good aim and objective, so the amount one donates is little but the benefit one can get is a lot. So the benefit of jhana is Boga Sambhati. One will be well off with material wealth and possession. So the person who can perform jhana properly, uh, systematically, can easily observe the last morality. So, by performing dana, he, she will not be hurting others, there will not be selfishness, there will be mitta, loving kindness, and compassion towards others. One is overcoming delusion, moha. In this way, 
one is able to control oneself, one automatically has control. By protecting others from being hurt, one's life will become uh, beautiful. So it is not sufficient to beautify one's life with dana alone, but it will be better if one can beautify one's life with sila morality. Overcoming a stream form of Lopa Dosa Moha, there will be Baba Santati. One will have and uh, one will be in a place where there is abundant uh, material things and material wealth. So by overcoming a stream form of Lopa Dosa Moha, one will gain Baba Sampati one will gain uh, many accomplishments in life. So one life will not be ugly if one can overcome a stream form of loba, dosa, moha. By having mitta karuna, loving kindness, compassion, knowledge, being free from selfishness, he, she, will become even more beautiful. So that's why it is said that by observing sila, morality, he, she will not lose happiness, well-being and comfort. By fulfilling sila, morality, one will overcome a extreme form of loba, so he, she will not be mad with greed. Indulging in loba greed, the person will become mad or crazy with greed. If one does not indulge in a stream form of loba greed, one will not take other people's belongings by force, so he, she will not be mad or crazy with grief. If one does not let oneself free on the sensual pleasure that he, she is not entitled to, then uh, he, she will not be mad with greed. If if one does not deceive in order to gain personal benefit, then one is overcoming madness with greed. So if one takes intoxic uh, intoxicants, drugs to have fun, then he, she is mad or crazy with greed. So if one refrains from that, one will not become mad with greed. So the best way of overcoming madness or craziness is observing sila, morality. So morality is the best way in order to cure madness. Having Mitta and Karuna, having loving kindness and compassion towards others, one will not indulge in dosa, they will not be killing or tormenting or hurting others, so one is overcoming madness with one is overcoming madness with anger. And by overcoming envy Jealousy also, one will not be mad with uh, anger. So if one refrains oneself from deceiving, lying for one's own benefit, then one will not be mad with anger. 
So this sila, morality, is the best way in order to cure madness. Having knowledge and refraining from things that should be refrained with moral shame and moral fear, one is also said to be overcoming madness with delusion. So it is very important to stay away from intoxicants and drugs. So one should stay away from these drugs and intoxicants with prudence. So Pana Vasangato Suro Mataka, the one who indulges in the craving for intoxicants, drugs, is a person who is mad, uh, who is crazy, uh, drunkard. So by observing the fifth precept of the five, one can overcome Suro Mataka one will be curing the craziness that can arise from uh, being intoxicated. So Saraji say said there are a lot of craziness, there are a lot of mad people who are mad uh, who are mad with being intoxicated. So because they drive, they drive when they are drunk or intoxic, uh, when they are intoxicated, they end up having uh, accidents and so on. So if people can refrain from intoxicants and drugs, then the world will prosper, there will be good business and also people will be pure and clean. So, sila, observing morality, is the best way in order to cure madness. So if everyone on earth is observing sila, morality, then there may be no mental hospitals at all. So tomorrow, Saraji will explain that Sila, the cosmetic of Sila, is better than the ordinary cosmetic.